Good day YouTube, One MJ here and welcome back. Right, sad day, sort of lunchtime here in Australia. Market still holding around that two point sort of one trillion dollar mark, so it's up ever so slightly. But again, it goes up and then it goes down, and we're still waiting to really see it make a decisive move. Bitcoin dominance has dropped ever so slightly, still 38%, but getting close to dropping under that. There was a little bit of volume, but again, this is what we see. It's a red day, and then all this volume comes in the following day and pushes prices up. But you wait, you know, a few days and then it just comes down lower. So, you know, remember Bitcoin was at 47,000 and 50,000 not that long ago. And even though we've pushed up from where it was a few days ago, we're still just waiting to see if that's going to hold. So 42,900, just under 43,000, which is nice. But again, we'll get to the charts and see whether that's, you know, really changed much for us. And gas prices have come down ever so slightly, but still pretty high. All right, top 100, what's done well considering the market's up 1%. Best movers are, there we go, uh, Rose, Oasis Network doing nice, FTX token is up. Uh, DAI has recovered, or at least multi-collateral DAI has recovered to uh, $1, so <laughs> it was quite off its peg there for a while, and Compound DAI, uh, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I'm guessing it's not supposed to be a dollar because it's sitting at two cents, so... Uh, I'll have to find out what exactly compound die is. Ave, nice, bit of a move there. Adam, nice little move. Look, there's a couple of nice moves sort of across the board. Matic, Litecoin, there we go. Litecoin hasn't done much for a while. So not looking too bad. But what about losses in the top 100? What's been hit the hardest? All right, Celsius is down, Loop Ring, Safe Moon, Cadena, Stella, Harmony, Clay, but look, nothing kind of major all very small kind of uh, retracements but now let's get to the Bitcoin chart because again this still really is the telltale sign as we can see we bounced off this channel down here got rejected pushed up and now we're sitting right on it again and we have a weekend coming so again this line here and it doesn't have to be exact it's just got to be thereabouts but you can see we're bouncing off this bounced off it there bounced off it sort of there bounced off it sort of there bounced off it there bounced off it there so again it's not that it can't wick above it slightly sometimes even we have these fake outs and things like that but pretty much we are still in a downward trend so as i always say uh, number one it's not financial advice i gotta throw that in the trend is your friend and if it's going down then you know if you're into shorting and things like that then that's probably what you're going to do but if you're an investor you're just trying to find good place to put in a buy order but hopefully not going crazy thinking again that is the bottom i'm buying at forty thousand seven hundred and six dollars because it won't go lower to only then find that it goes a whole stack lower so again you've got to make your own decisions i'm never going to tell you what to do but it's not that hard to go and find areas of confluence throughout a chart. Does it mean it's going to stop here and this is going to be the best price? No. Does it mean it's going to stop here and this is going to be the best price? No. Does it mean this is where it's going to? This is that bottom price and this is where it's going to stop? No. It could stop somewhere in there. No one truly knows, but these kind of things give you a rough indication of where you'll probably find some support and areas that may be a good idea to put in a buy order. So again, as you already know, I had a, a Bitcoin buy up here. I've got another one uh, just down here, and then I've got one just above 34500 and then I've got one at uh, $33,500 because uh, I think that will be the bottom if we make it there. But as I've said before, if we go lower, then I've got plenty of cash on the side. I'm putting more into cash at the moment than really buying anything. All right, the total market cap. Again, this is something I'm looking at because this gives us a good idea of sort of where we're going. Still on a downward trend here, and we haven't even been able to come up and touch this line yet. So we're still a ways off from really the market making any decisive moves. And look, we could bounce around here for quite some time, but I just get the feeling like around about sort of February, March, we're going to get a change one way one way or the other whether it's for the good i you know spot bitcoin or something gets approved or regulation comes out they're already talking about uh that coming in the next few weeks and it wouldn't surprise me if we go all get it sort of around about the same time 
So spot Bitcoin ETF gets approved. Sweet. Uh, a week or two later, then regulations come through, which, uh, you know, the spot Bitcoin ETF could push Bitcoin up. Then the regulations aren't as favorable as what everyone else is thinking. Then it pulls it down for a little while before it eventually, you know, makes this decision whether it's going higher or lower. But look, there's a whole stack of different things out there that could really happen. So we just need to be careful. And the other one I'm looking at is the Ethereum chart. Now it does still look somewhat similar to Bitcoin's chart, just not exactly the same. These are the lows that we saw over here. These are the highs, sorry, here's the lows we saw over here and there's the high. Peak, 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 just a little bit different. This rolled over more. So for me, I am really looking at if Bitcoin is going to come down to, you know, somewhere sort of around about here, around the, you know, $35,000, $36,000 level, then I would be thinking that Ethereum is probably coming somewhere down to around about here. It's going to get back into the uh, $2,000 range. Now, it doesn't have to follow to exactly. It's just going to be there. But again, here are some points that I put in. We couldn't hold, and it looks like this is now acting as resistance. So if it doesn't break through, and it could, it's still early in the day over there, but we got the weekend coming. I would suspect that we could range around or again, push down to this kind of low point here where we can see there's a couple of touches uh, here and you know, you can probably, no, because that was the high. All right, so we've got a couple of touches and it's both resistance and support and we can see it wick down to here. So I would be suspecting that, you know, if Bitcoin goes down to the kind of $36,000 levels, I think you could, you know, put put in a buy order for Ethereum around sort of $2,762 thereabouts. Wouldn't be a bad spot. It may not get triggered because it may only come down to about here, $2,850. Who knows? But you just got to find some areas where you think, all right, I want to buy at a discount. I'm not going to go too crazy trying to think I can pick the exact bottom, but where would be a good I, you know, kind of point for where it might come down to? Well, it's already been here, so there's not really a whole lot of point putting one here. I'm not saying it wouldn't be useful at all. It could come back here and bounce, but I'd probably want to go a little bit lower. All right, where's a kind of good touch point? I reckon somewhere around about here. So $2,915, thereabouts. Seems like a good one. Where could be another one after there? Probably going to come down to around about here. $2,780 thereabout seems like a good one. And then I could put another one in down there. But again, we just need to remember we may be going a whole lot lower. So be careful with how much you're putting in. Uh, would be my personal advice, not financial advice. All right, couple of stories that I want to look at. Twitter, I found this very, very interesting. So Bitcoin has four cycles that it usually plays out. The first one is the takeoff, and then we get the first sell-off. Then we get the fake top cycle, and then we get the top cycle. And this is repeated before. Takeoff, first sell-off, we get there, drops down. A fake top, everyone thinks that's it, and then it runs again. And we can see it here again, although look, you know, <laughs> They're not exactly the same, and it'd be hard to say that these are the same pattern sort of playing out. They're a similar pattern. They're not the same pattern, and he's not saying that it's the exact same pattern either. But just very, very interesting. So here we've had our first one, second one, and so according to this, we should be into our fake top. So then it should pump up probably, I would say, to around about sort of a 100 and something thousand. I really think we're going to have a lot of resistance at 100,000 or thereabouts. Could be a little bit before, could be sort of in the 90s. We might even just push over it and then I would think we'd have a big sell-off. But again, that would possibly be the fake top before we get that last big final push. But I don't know about that because that's going up to like the million dollars. I don't know if Bitcoin's ready to go to a million dollars just yet. But hey, something very, very interesting that a similar pattern has played out time and time again in Bitcoin. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. All right, Dogecoin was one of the biggest movers that moved up 25% because Elon has announced that uh, Tesla will start accepting Doge payments, but it's not for the car, ladies and gentlemen. It's just for the merch at the moment. It's not to say the cars won't come later, but this is all it's taken to push it up. So you can go and buy some merch from uh, Tesla and you can pay in Doge. All right, Brazilian mayor to reportedly invest 1% of city reserves in Bitcoin. So this uh, mayor, uh, 
Eduardo, I'm going to butcher this name, but Paez, I'm going to say. He's been talking to the Miami mayor, Francis Suarez, about Bitcoin. And now he's decided to put 1% of uh, the city's wealth into Bitcoin. So this is very, very interesting. I think, again, the pieces are slowly starting to fall in place. Regulation could come and really put a damper on things. That's definitely possible, something to keep in mind. But slowly but surely, you're finding more cities, you know, El Salvador's building its Bitcoin city. Miami wants to become a crypto hub in America. You know, you got the mayor of New York talking about taking his first two or three payments in Bitcoin, I think he said he's going to do. And all these other little things happening. Tonga, you know, possibly going to have Bitcoin as legal payment, legal tender over there. And all these other countries are slowly but surely starting to come around. Now, not all of them. So I think it was Pakistan is going to try and outlaw them all together. Good luck with that. And China's not really overly impressed with them either. So we'll have to see how that goes. But it's bit by bit. You just got to remember, all of this takes time. A lot of people come to crypto and they just, you know, think, People make hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars overnight. It really doesn't happen overnight. Most of the time, it takes months, bare minimum, to years for those kind of things to happen. It's not an overnight thing, but the it just feels like it's overnight compared to how other you know stocks and things have performed. And don't get me wrong, some stocks have done really well, but they really have taken years and years and years to kind of build up those crazy gains, whereas crypto, it doesn't take quite as long it's probably about a quarter of the time to do you know 10 times the growth sometimes but very very dangerous space to invest your money in if you don't understand the space and cycles and things like that so my you know number one personal advice would be to anyone coming to crypto just do a little bit of research before you blindly start throwing money in you know outside of sort of bitcoin i think that's a relatively safe bet but still never guaranteed there's always something could happen and bitcoin could go to zero it's not impossible but that would be your safest bet it's not going to have the crazy gains of the altcoins but it can still have crazy gains just not as crazy and outside of that you really gotta yeah understand the processes and you know what crypto is and what altcoins are and what they do be able to have a look at their teams and you know their history and things like that before you really put too much money into this space because a lot of people get burnt and look even i got burnt when i first got into it in 2017 but i was i'm going to run with smart enough but probably just too stubborn to sell uh when it dropped you know 80 percent uh, i was just like whatever i'll just leave it and you know that luckily turned out to be a really good thing for me because <laughs> uh, it ended up going back up anyway. And I never put enough into, you know, make like thousands and thousands of dollars or anything like that. But I did, yeah, I'm going to say a little bit lucky. That was a learning curve for me. I was lucky enough that I was stubborn enough to simply not sell. And that taught me a very valuable lesson. All right, one more thing I want to have a look at. Visa has done a survey and one in four businesses surveyed plan to accept cryptocurrency payments this year. Visa is a really, really big business, one of the biggest payment rails out there. And one in four businesses are planning to accept cryptocurrency. 25%, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it doesn't seem like all that much, but it's because we're still in that inf infancy space it really will grow and again it's just another key indication of where this space is going it's really really easy to get caught up in these downward cycles and particularly when you go through a bear market and it lasts for a year most people and me included you know you just lose all interest and then you're gone and you don't stick with it you look at the people that have done really really well in crypto and have really made a whole lot of money they're the ones that just stuck at it and didn't give up and that is one thing i have learned I won't give up on crypto this time. I will stick at it, but I'll also try and be a little bit smarter about you know how much money I'm pouring into it, I'm not pouring into it, but putting into it at certain times and really understanding that buying things at all-time highs is not the greatest idea. The one thing I've learned is just wait for pullbacks. They always come. Could the pullback be uh, higher than where you're already considering buying? Yeah, absolutely. That is the risk that you can take. Hence why you can still dollar cost average in, but just don't put everything. Have some cash sitting on the side for if it goes the other way. 
because a lot of the times when I've bought in at all time highs, there's been a dip come at some stage. And if I had have had some cash on the side, I would have been able to buy at a better price. But early on, I was just constantly putting all my money in, like most people, newbies, thinking this is going forever. It's never going to stop. And then it does stop. <laughs> all right, that's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Still pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment there, but there were some small gains, so make the most of them, and I'll see you next time.